YouTube welcome back to another video in today's video we're gonna be doing a bald fade I'm gonna start off by picking off my clients hair I'm using my guard right now just to see how much hair I'm actually gonna be taking off he only said he wanted a little bit off the top so I was being pretty cautious with it ended up going with my number five closed uh, just so the hair doesn't snag up or anything like that and I'm gonna be putting my bald line in about a finger length above the ear what I mean by that is if I rest my finger on top of his ear horizontally, the top of my finger is going to be right where my guy line is going to start and that usually gives me enough room to complete the fade. Right now what we're doing is we're going in no guard open, about a half inch. Um, I had a couple requests to do all the guidelines first and then work them down if that makes sense so i'm gonna go no guard number one guard number two guard and then work all those guidelines out so all i'm doing is stacking up about every half inch with my number one guard and then this is my number two guard right now after that i'm gonna go in with my one and a half guard starting open and work just below where I was with my number two guard closed and then close that up as we make our way down now I have my number one guard starting open just really using the corners most of the time you guys can see it's now closed and all I'm really doing is really just flicking out and attacking those dark spots that I see I'm gonna follow up behind that with my half guard open just using my corners I don't want to create a guideline and push this fade up as I make my way down the fade I'm closing that lever little by little I usually go about every half so I'll start open close it halfway close it up all the way and work back through it got my no guard on starting close using my corners like I said I'm not trying to push this fade up so you're gonna be doing a lot of corner work once you get down towards the skin area once I feel confident with that bottom line I'm gonna go back through in detail Starting with my half guard, if I gotta jump up to my number one, I usually don't have to unless it's pretty high. I'm just gonna tip that clipper on its side just so I can cut through the hair instead of making another guideline. Onto the other side, I'm kinda just gonna have you guys follow through. Um, I'm pretty sure I do the same steps here. If not, I'll jump back in and explain what I'm doing. But I really appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Um, I'm only about six videos in and I've been getting a lot of feedback. I really appreciate it. Um, if you can hit that subscribe button, I do have my Instagram posted on the bottom right of the video. If you guys can follow me there too, I'd really appreciate it. I'm just trying to grind this out and learn the process. see I got my boy Basio in the background um, I really look towards him for inspiration motivation for all the stuff that I do in the barber world I'm um, trying to get into the education so I started with the YouTube channel just to see how I feel with voiceovers and communicating to audiences that I don't see I feel like once I get the hang of that I'll be able to easily explain something in front of somebody Y'all can see I'm just attacking that bottom line, really using my corners, flicking out. I do not want to create another guideline, because then once you do that, you really got to push the rest of the fade up. And when you do one side, then the other, you might end up with an off-balance fade, and no one wants to do that. Have your client look in the mirror and be like, yo, uh, it's a little higher on this side. <laughs> Working on the back, we're going to have to push our guy lines up about three quarters of an inch instead of a half inch. Uh, on near the occipital bone, definitely the hair grows a lot thicker. 
So you'll, you'll see I, I barely even use my number two on this just because I don't want to hit that crown area. I'm going to go back through with my thin inch ears, clipper over comb just to lighten that spot up there. I feel like if I would have went up any higher, I definitely would have created either a patch in that crown area or just another guy line that I didn't want to have to deal with. Using real short strokes, just attacking that bottom line, opening that lever notch by notch. Using my corners a lot. I, it looks like I'm using my full blade, but I'm honestly just altering between the left and the right side of my clipper using those last two to three teeth. These fabulous trimmers that I have here are not zero gapped versus my fabulous FX trimmers. Uh, my FX trimmers are definitely zero gap. These are gonna be good for getting little lines out or you see dark spots in the hair, you can really just corner with those. It's not gonna put a harsh line in. And those trimmers really just work a lot slower. You can see I'm kind of gauging with my one and a half guard, whether it's worth going in with the two. And I just decided just to go in with my thin inch ears. I, don't, I didn't want to create a patch. He's got curly hair, but it's really like loose curly if that makes sense like it's super super soft i don't know if you guys have dealt with that leave a comment below tell me what you would have done in that situation if you're unsure about a guard size clipper over comb is probably going to be your best friend just because you don't want to go in and mess it up and bring it too low and then you're gonna have to push that fade up and then you're not gonna keep that box shape on the side of the client's head. Using the corners of my trimmer just creating that C cut there. Um, on the, When you go to the other side you kind of want to face the client in front of you or use the mirror face the client towards the mirror just to see how high the other side should be. On the vertical bar, I like to keep it as natural as possible. Um, last thing I want to do is push my client back. He's got kind of a light hairline, so I keep the vertical bar low and then just ghost line it across his forehead. You'll see right here. This side is definitely a lot weaker in the corner, so I do like to start horizontally on his hairline and then tap at that vertical bar. And I'm trying to get out of the habit of using my left hand as a stabilizer. I do put my middle finger or my pointer finger down on the client's face or cheekbone or whatever, but I do use my left hand a lot for sta stability. Um, I just, I don't know, I shake a lot and that just helps me out a lot. So you gotta do what you gotta do to achieve the client's expectations. Using a straight razor you'll really see the edge up come alive. Um, I don't use enhancements. I'm trying to get clients used to the fact that enhancements is a good thing. In my area no one uses it so it's kind of hard to ask a client if he wants it or if, if he knows what it is. It's hard to explain in my area. We don't really have too many people doing it. I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think below. Please hit that like button, subscribe, and I'm um, posting weekly content and my videos are getting better and better. So let me know what you think or what I can change. I appreciate you.